All right. <clears throat> Hopefully get paired with a legend player this time. Won't lose as much ranking, and we'll gain more if we win. Uh, yeah, Miracle Rogue can beat anything, can also lose to anything. Super frustrating deck to play against. Um, yeah, there's a lot of it on ladder right now, too. It was uh, it gained a lot of popularity because it was good against the mid-range hunter deck with Houndmaster and Savannah Hymen. Well, that sucks. We're playing against it again. I think uh, out of the 10 or 12 times I've played against Rogue today, they've had coin every single time, which roughly doubles their chances of winning because of... Uh, because of SI Agent. I'm actually going to keep the Imani Berserker because my other two two drops, Direwolf Alpha and Knife Juggler, both die to turn two SI Agent. So I'm going to keep the, the Imani. I might not draw one drop this way, so it's kind of greedy, but it, it worked out. I drew Voidwalker, so that's good. <clears throat> Direwolf Alpha is not great, but if I draw another card that costs one, it'll work out fine. Now, one thing you should keep in mind is that I'll pretty much never keep Abusive Sergeant in my opening hand if I'm going first. If I'm going second, I'll usually keep it, but if I'm going first, I won't. Because, like I said, I don't like playing it without getting value out of the battle cry, so I'll pretty much never play it turn one. <clears throat> Alright. So yeah, I'm going to play Imani. If I play Dire Wolf Alpha, he can just coin SI Agent turn two and kill it. And like I said before, playing Imani before Dire Wolf is usually right. A lot of cards I don't want to see though. Deadly poison. Just hopefully his hand is. I don't even want it to be all backstabs. Even though my board's immune to it right now, they'll be good later. He's got a tough call, I guess. It's not like. A really uncommon situation for Miracle for Miracle Rogue. You should pretty much know what to do here. Hero power and nothing, maybe. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, Monty Berserker's awesome. Look at how much value it just got. Preparation and eviscerate. It's gonna be pretty disappointing when I still lose this game. Alright. Harvest Golem, hit him in the face. Again, I had the option of 2 drop plus 1 drop, but I prefer to play the 3, like I said. You want to play the card that's more expensive when you have two different ways to spend all your mana. Because now next turn I have so many more options. You know, I can play double Dire Wolf, I can still play Dire Wolf for this guy, I can life tap Dire Wolf. Like, if I held off on the Harvest Golem, I'd never really have a good turn to play it beyond turn 3. This is one of those matchups where I think it might be better to play Scarlet Crusader just because it hits a little bit harder, but there's enough Shaman on ladder that it's, uh, in most other matchups I prefer Harvest Golem, so it's pretty much the safer card to play, I think. We'll see if he has Deadly Poison. That's like the card that worries me the most. Interesting. Alright, so I have a very easy abusive sergeant play where I buff Harvest Golem. The problem with that is I would only be using three of my mana. You always want to use all your mana, so always look for ways to do that and still accomplish what you want to do. So like I said, you want to kill all their stuff all the time. So I'm going to try to do that. But I'm going to do it in a way that uses all my mana and still trades Harvest Golem. So I'm going to play Dire Wolf there, uh, Dire Wolf here on the right. Just pay attention to positioning. Go ahead and trade off and hit him in the face with this guy. Now, if he's got Deadly Poison plus Blade Flurry, then, well, I'm pretty screwed as usual in this matchup, but like I said, it just completely depends on their draw. If they have that two-card combination without any assisted card draw, then good for the rogue player, but some hands just don't have the luxury of playing around it, and this is one of those hands. I'd probably lose the game if he has it, though. Yeah, there's just no recovering at that point. I don't have Doomguard yet. I mean, he's not immediately killing all my stuff, so that's a good sign, I think. 
Even if he did, I guess he'd be down to three cards. Most of the rogue players I've played today have been pretty quick with their decisions. Maybe this I mean this guy is, you know, rank one, he really doesn't want to make a, make a mistake. Really wants legend. It's our job to, to be the gatekeeper. You really gotta make him earn it. So he's already used coin, one preparation. So he's only got four mana to work with. <laughs> oh, Blade Flurry now is still really bad for me. Oh, he didn't have it. That's awesome, actually. Alright, so I definitely need to kill this because Blade Flurry is just really dangerous, honestly. <clears throat> so in terms of ways to use all of my mana, it's pretty much just Defender and Abusive Sergeant. If I'm going to do that instead of Life Tapping. I could also play these two in Life Tap, but um, I, I almost always like to play Defender when I have two creatures because... If you hold off on playing Defender, trying to get more value out of it, basically you run the risk of them having an AoE like Blade Flurry, and then you're just not going to get the full value out of this guy. So you should almost always take it when you can. Uh, what I'm going to do here is finish off Blood Mage with Voidwalker, and I'm going to do it with Voidwalker because, instead of a Direwolf, because this way Direwolves aren't vulnerable to Fan of Knives, which is a pretty common card in Rogue. Then I'm going to play Defender right here. In the middle, because I want to get this guy out of Fan of Knives range. It doesn't matter if I attack first or second, because either way, a Harvest Golem token is four power. I'm an abusive sergeant way on the right, so that Dire Wolf Alpha is buffing something, you know, and that card is just getting more use. Hit him in the face with stuff, pass back, and just cross my fingers, hoping he doesn't have Blade Flurry plus Deadly Poison. He didn't have it last turn. Maybe he was trying to get even more value out of it. I really hope not, because I'm screwed if he has it. I don't think he does, though. I think if he had it, he 100% would have played it last turn to slow me down. So if he plays it now, it's off the top. No, I just didn't have Blade Flurry, so yeah. Nice face roll game. Um, but yeah, you guys saw how even in a game where... There wasn't a lot of creature combat and all that, and I'm still focusing on where I'm placing creatures. One thing that I really want to keep in mind for you is that, or have you keep in mind, is that anytime you play a creature, whether you have Direwolf, whether you have Defender of Argus or not, just always be thinking, what if I top deck those cards? Try to put Argent Squire in the middle of all of your creatures. Like, if you have two creatures, put Argent Squire in the middle. And the reason you do that is because... When you Defender of Argus, you almost always want to buff Argent Squire. This is like the best card in the deck to Defender of Argus. So if you're 100% buffing Argent Squire by putting it in the middle, you give yourself the option of buffing Creature A or Creature B. But if you put it off to the side, you can only buff Argent Squire plus Creature B. And sometimes, you know, you want to buff Creature A. So if that kind of makes sense, you know. If you have two dudes, put Argent Squire in the middle. Same thing with Shield Bear. You almost always want to Defender this guy. Because if you can give this guy permanent power, uh, then anything that's running into him is going to be taking damage, he's going to have a ton of use even if they AoE all your other stuff, because when they AoE, Shield Bear usually lives, so try to get power on this guy and Argent Squire if possible, you know, with Shattered Sun Cleric and uh, Defender. But yeah, I hope that kind of helped out, and uh, thank you guys for watching, I'll see you next time.